A good penguin counter has to be certainly serious. You need to be dedicated. You have to admit some defeat. And you gotta keep practicing, practicing, practicing. I can now count that group of 500 or more penguin nests within a 5% margin of error. As a kid, I guess my biggest aspiration was to be an astronaut, but I had a knee injury. So I realized that this was a chance to go to another planet. The light's different. All the species down here are unique. It's shut off from the rest of the planet in many ways. It was pretty wild. I mean, getting dropped off, and all of a sudden, you're in the middle of a colony of 100,000 penguins. So it was, it was pretty crazy. I've counted penguins for many years. Especially these chin straps, they always pick out spots that are very steep and difficult to access. The penguins that we study on the peninsula give us an, an unbelievably good case study in how climate change can impact organisms. And so we have to somehow communicate the fact that some areas are getting colder, some areas are getting warmer, and that the species that live there have to deal with climate change. Ocean IDs and the project are run out of a, a little office in my house, uh, but this is all that I do. When people say, hey, what's your job? Well, I count penguins. Uh, what? What does that mean? I mean, people just don't get the idea that we need to have these baselines in place so that the whole science community out there has data available to assess how the climate is warming, why it's happening, why the responses are occurring as they are. OK, so I got 35 twice. I'm going to do it one more time. To get to Antarctica, there are no regular airports. It's, you can't just fly in and hop on a boat. It's very expensive to do. So it's through a lot of generous spirit by quite a few numbers of tour operators, tour companies, vessels, captains, and whatever, that I managed to keep this project alive. It was, uh, these were reservations that were made by one ocean. The hotel has no reservations for us. She's, it'll get straightened out, yeah. Okay, yeah, I mean, we have all this gear, we have all this stuff. And stuff. Then you have yeah. one duct here. I'm exhausted. It's been a long, long haul since uh, literally June and July with all the paperwork and other details that had to be organized. But uh, finally here, I guess I'm feeling some sense of relief. Let's do it. You got it, Thomas? Black Brown Albert Love, this is my friend. Woo! All right. We're crossing the Drake Passage, which is 650 miles at least, of the windiest, blowiest, howlingest water on the planet. There could be force 10 or 12 almost hurricane-like winds hitting us in the face. It's totally driving me crazy how much time it's taking to get to our study area. I mean, this is the way it is. Antarctica is way the hell down there, and it takes forever. And sometimes you have to ride on long ship journeys with the tour ships to go to the Falklands in South Georgia. We're still four days away. I want to start counting penguins. Pelagic, you off it? Yes, good afternoon. Go ahead. Hi there. Uh, you may see us behind you. We're now in position. We now have 15 days of trying to execute a very carefully thought out research plan. Three to four days were planned here at Deception to count every chinstrap penguin on the island. Deception Island is a volcanic crater at about the worst latitude in the world. It is constantly grey here, and the wind blows all the time. The sea temperature is 
zero, and if you fall in, you're a dead man. Uh, first morning in deception. Cold. Right now, down to the ocean, if this is the top of the bridge. Ocean Rockies, project, go ahead. Uh, Mag, Chris, we've aborted. Uh, too dangerous up high. We are slowly making our way back to uh, the drop off site. Over. This is definitely extreme penguin counting, uh, and you know, counting them in our dreams as they go across us in the fog. All right, excellent. A feast. These steaks are excellent. Someone wants it more done or less done? No, no we're less happy time. guys here. You should come join us. This is the Antarctic. There was probably no real expectation that things would fly according to plan, and already, you know, only a day and a half into this, and we've changed 30 times already, so um, that's the way it is. We've got a whole swarm of krill up here on the beach, all boiled by the hot water of deception. These little shrimp uh, fuel the whole ecosystem. Some of us call it the power lunch of the Antarctic. Um, all the penguins eat it, the whales certainly eat it. And part of our study, it's really key to figure out what's happening with the, the krill population. They say there's 60,000 penguins there or something. I don't personally understand how four guys can count 60,000 of anything. We've been in this for almost four hours. I wouldn't be surprised if I counted somewhere close to maybe a little less than 20,000 uh, nests today. It's a room with a view, for God's sakes. Hey, come on. This is high-priced real estate up here. It blows free of snow early in the season. It's a hell of a walk to get up here, but you know, they're penguins. They can do it. He's agreeing with me right now. We counted every bloody penguin on this island. Nobody's ever done that before in one season, let alone in one fortnight like we have. Ecologists tend to focus on species that will go extinct as a result of climate change, but there will be species that will, in fact, flourish in that environment. I think adaptability is really the key in the penguin world, and it's probably gonna be a key in the human world as well. The science keeps growing, and our understanding keeps tuning up and getting better. Some of it's been hard, some of it's been easy, but in the end, we get the data. That's what it's all about. We count the penguins, and we're going to keep counting those penguins.